Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we are starting the starting the month-long journey of taking part in the Three Rivers Every Bit Counts Challenge. And that is where every single day of the entire month of August, I am going to be preser preserving something in some form. And I already screwed up the first day because today is the second and it just got too late yesterday and I was unfortunately I had my day a little bit too booked and some surprise stuff came up and I wasn't able to get to it. So instead of pretending I'm doing this on two separate days, we're going to actually going to tell you I'm doing two projects one day. A lot of people doing this challenge tend to uh, do it like a week at a time because it can be it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff to include, but I'm a daily vlogger, so it kind of seemed like it would be a lot of fun to show you guys the dailiness of of what a challenge like this involves as well as i can kind of bring you along like like when you're canning something what do you do after you pull it out of the can or most a lot of people end the video there so we can go through and we can i can show you you know we're washing the jars we're putting we're marking them we're putting them away you know <laughs> i'll even show you how long it takes me to actually do that because sometimes it can be up to a week I'm gonna try not to do that though, because it drives my husband crazy. And then when you dehydrate something and you, you know, what do you do with it after you dehydrate it? How long does it actually take to dehydrate? There's so many different things that go into food preservation. And I just thought it would be kind of, I can show you a unique perspective because I already vlog daily. So I can show you guys what I do daily with all of that food preservation. And for me, food preservation is canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting. Uh, so it could be any one of those things that I am actually doing. Today I have a freezer full of chicken that I need to go through, well not full, but I have I have a, a plenty of, of chicken left over from the last batch that went to freezer camp and I have another batch of a hundred birds that are getting ready to go to freezer camp in about six and a half weeks. So I'm trying to clear out the freezer as best as possible so this challenge could not be coming at a more perfect time. We're gonna be blowing through our freezer, putting it in canning jars. The first thing that we're gonna do, we are gonna can a chicken, a chicken soup base. Basically what I like to do, I've actually discovered this on accident when I had some leftover like chicken and broth when I was making, when I was canning a chicken soup of some sort. And so I canned it and it was basically, I just did I, like a whatever size you're doing, uh, fill it up with broth, but then it's like a third or so of the jar is actually chicken. And so it's basically just chicken broth in, in chicken or chicken in chicken broth whatever. The point of being able to do this is that you can customize it however you want in whatever time you want and you don't have soggy gross vegetables. Because if you make a chicken soup, a chicken soup with like potatoes and like corn and and peas and whatever else you like in your chicken soup, those vegetables don't need to cook as long as the chicken, but you have to cook it for the chicken time. So, my little workaround with that is that you can you can keep, I mean, I have a ton of soup in my I, I do soup all the time. But it is also nice to be able to have the option of doing whatever the heck you want in the moment. It's great for it's great for summertime. I know it's soup in the summer, but it works out great because you have the harvest and you can just bring it in, throw it in the pot, let it simmer for a little bit while you're taking a shower and whatever you're doing to come in after the garden, dinner's ready. It's also a great thing to use with dehydrated food because you can just put the dehydrated food in there and let it kind of simmer, let all the vegetables kind of reconstitute, and then you again you have dinner. So this is a great option. I'm just going to show you that real quick. And then later on, I'm going to be making some dehydrated beet powder. Tomorrow's video, I'm actually doing a, a the August Jamboree challenge uh, collaboration. So after that one, it's going to be another two day video. And then from then on, it'll just be every day. Um, I just had a couple of days where I had some collaborations going on. So I'm doubling up the preservation in the video. So <laughs> I hope that makes sense to you guys. We have two chickens and a 14 liter it says 14 liter, 14 quart. So really it's probably more like almost a 15 quart stock pot. We're gonna make some chicken broth to begin with. I have two chickens here that are fully thawed out. Okay, so we're just gonna cut this guy open, cut this one open, dump them out. This is my favorite way of making chicken broth, by the way. I will save the carcass from these chickens. I'll strain out all the chicken broth. I will take all the all the, the meat out and I will set aside all the bones, the skin, any form of collagen in here whatsoever. And I'll put it aside in a freezer bag. And then when I get enough of those, I will make another big batch. That bone broth is what I prefer to, to can over this meat stock. But 
In order to make it work, I'm probably gonna add a little bit more water than I would otherwise. The reason I don't like to can it is that it, it degrades the gelatin in it. Um, not completely, but enough. And so I usually like to hold on to the collagen for the gut healing benefits because my gut's jacked up. We have our chicken, it's covered with broth. I probably put like three inches on top. If you're trying to make bone, bone broth that gels, you're not gonna wanna do that. You're gonna wanna just cover it by like an inch. But I know it's not gonna gel anyway, so I'm not gonna super stress it. I'm gonna bring it up to a simmer. I'm gonna skim all the scum off, off the top of it and then add the salt to it. I'm gonna add probably a third of a cup of salt and like a third of a cup of, no, we're not gonna add vinegar to this round. I don't usually add vinegar to my meat stocks. I add it to my bone broth, but, and then we're just gonna let it simmer away. We're gonna lower the heat obviously to just barely simmer. You want it to where you can just barely see bubbles coming up to the top. It's just like, I don't, it's just, I don't know, barely bubble. We're gonna do that for a few hours and then uh, we're gonna come back and we're gonna can this. While we're waiting for that, that second batch, I have my first batch that we're gonna go ahead and put into jars. So we had our chicken here and basically, basically all I'm gonna do is just put the bones in one, the bones, the skin, any coll collagen, cartilage in one and then um, the meat in the other. And this stuff, you can also just put this directly into a Ziploc, but I didn't think that far when I, when I clicked on it or when I grabbed it. <laughs> so the next step is just going to be to fill each of these jars about a third of the way through or full. It's not a science, just kind of do whatever. Okay. Perfect. So we got just enough broth left over to give a couple of cups to the hubby which is the whole reason why I actually made this. So let's go ahead and rub the rims here with some vinegar to cut any grease, get any particles that probably got on there. Then we're gonna to be topping it with our four jars canning lids because these things are amazing and they're in stock and they're super cheap. And if you click my link in the down bar, you can get 10% off of your order when they're already cheaper than the, at least they're cheaper than the store, local stores where I live. Uh, this is cheaper before the 10% discount. So I hope you guys will think about checking them out because they're amazing. Since I have so much time before the next batch is done, I'm just gonna pop these bad boys in the canner and we're gonna run a canner load with just four jars. <laughs> Sorry, it's just funny. So let's go ahead, pop these in the canner, and then we'll bust out the beets. Uh, bust out the beets. <laughs> I'm just full of jokes today, full of dad jokes. But anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the, <laughs> we're gonna bust out the beets and make our beet powder while this stuff is starting to can. All right, I cracked myself up way too much. I want to make sure that I am pointing out here these beets suck. These beets, like I've been in my fridge for probably over two months. So we're just gonna salvage the parts of it that we can and toss the parts to the chickens that cannot. If you're doing a lot of these, you could totally bust out the food processor, but hopefully this will be, hopefully this will do the trick. So we're just gonna grate it. I'm just gonna be turning this into a powder. It makes sense. Some of the videos that I saw did this and, and grated it. I don't know if I'm supposed to par cook it before I do this, but I'm not gonna, because I'm just turning it into a powder to add to like smoothies and like whatever else. Okay, that should hopefully be good. And I'm just gonna grate these all. I've told you guys about this a lot, but this is a Titan peeler. This thing is amazing. It digs into the skin. Like it just really gets in there and peels off the thickest skin. Like it just takes off beet skin like it's nothing. I'll link this down below for you guys because it's amazing. We are gonna spread these beets out on our dehydrator tray. I have an Excalibur, but I never bought the actual, like the, the jelly trays that go on there. So I just used the jelly trays from my old Presto dehydrator. Oh, that three beets made quite a lot of ground up beets. I'm gonna 
right, so three trays. It's a super bummer to run the dehydrator for only three trays, but with the way that we've processed these and um, graded these up, it's not gonna take long at all. I'll tell you how long it took at the end. Usually when I'm dehydrating, I like to wait until evening before I toss them in the dehydrator. And the reason for that with my particular schedule is that usually things will take like, you know, eight to 12 hours. I mean, it, it never takes a short enough time as everybody says it does. So I throw it in right before I go to bed and that way I can kind of babysit it a little bit and get it to be just the right time if it goes beyond that. Uh, the, the times that you're gonna dehydrate things are gonna be so dependent on the time of the year, how, what moisture it is, what temperature it is outside, what temperature you keep it inside, how effective your dehydrator is, what type of dehydrator you use. There's all different kinds of things and you have to kind of, once you dehydrate a bit, you'll get a better understanding of how your dehydrator works. We just moved to a completely different environment. So I'm gonna have to get reused to my dehydrator. So we'll kind of see how it goes, but. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now. So the beets are done. They're out of the dehydrator, it took six hours they were probably done at five but i went ahead and did an extra hour just to make sure so the next step in order to turn this sorry for the shadows it's dark um in order to turn this into a powder we need to grind it and that's basically that's it and i can tell now that i'm peeling it off they're probably not ready so we'll just grind this down and toss it back in the dehydrator just to get it nice and crispy. Okay, so we got these things dehydrated, or uh, ground up. Now we're just gonna spread the beet powder. I don't know, I really only need one tray for this part. Get it spread out. And then, I'm gonna cover it in a mesh, top and bottom. So then this is gonna fly away. I'm gonna put this back in the dehydrator for, I don't know, probably an hour. But honestly, in order to avoid this crazy lighting, I'm just gonna see if I do want it. So with the, uh, the humidity in the area, I had to toss this in for another hour this morning when I woke up. Cause I left, I put it in for an hour last night and that would have been perfectly fine. Uh, but with the humidity and everything, it actually ended up feeling more Sorry, moist than it did the day before, um, or than it did last night, this morning. So it would have been just fine with that extra hour. However, since I left it out and open and exposed, I had to do it for another hour and then I let it cool down. It's totally cool. You wanna make sure if you're gonna be jarring it up like I'm gonna be, you wanna make sure it's cool. Otherwise it can pull moisture in. Moisture is your enemy with anything to do with dehydrating. Avoid it like the plague. Okay, this is not the most ideal way to do it. It's really not, I'm not gonna do it like that. Put it in a little bowl first. So now we're gonna go ahead and, not like that. Let's get our candy tunnel. Put it in there. Grind this bad boy up here. Quite a cloud. Oh, and also with the chickens, I, ver I forgot to mention, I ended up doing, I got these four, and then the second batch that I did, I got a full canning batch. So I got seven quarts off of two chickens, and I have a gallon of broth left over that's in the fridge. So that was a pretty darn successful day, I would say. Okay, I'll a little bit longer. Ooh, it looks so beautiful. Can you see that color? You can totally, you could even use this, like see how, what a small amount three, three beets makes. With this, if you have access to it, you're gonna, you wanna put some kind of, you can vacuum seal it if you, if you have that ability to do that. You can also put a dry, dry pack in there. That will absorb any extra moisture that might be in there. And other than that, I'm just gonna mark this and put it on the, put it on the pantry shelf. I'm so excited. This stuff is so just deep. The color is just so incredible. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Okay. We got three chickens preserved in the form of 
what's that, 11 quart size jars on the pantry shelf, on the pantry shelf stable, and it's amazing. And we saved some beets from going bad. And we're gonna have this in the future. You can add this to like smoothies. You can add it to change the color of things. Like you could add it to like a, a yogurt or something like that and just make it a deep, beautiful, lush color. You could even use it to dye fabrics and things like that. It's amazing stuff. I love this. I'm so excited. I kinda wanna buy more beets just to make more of this powder. If you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern, this is crooked. Has this been crooked this whole time? Oh my gosh. If you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri and we are transplanted from Washington state. I'm bringing you along, sharing with you all the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. I also like to do all kinds of videos like this on canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting, as well as videos like you're gonna see tomorrow on how to use those preserved foods in your everyday cooking. If that sounds awesome to you, hit this button right here. This is the subscribe button. This is what reminds you that I'm here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. This year's gonna be my last pantry cooking video. And then up here is gonna be a new playlist that I'm gonna start for this uh, collaboration right here. So if you make sure you check that one out, you can get all kinds of ideas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.